Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting, and if you've been painting a while and you want to paint along with us, you can, or offer tips and suggestions, that would be terrific. I was getting tired of having to constantly, you know, trace and then paint to practice, you know, it's trace and then paint, or draw and then paint. And it was just like, oh, I've just gotten to the point where I thought, you know, I don't want to do this one more time, but I really wanted to practice the chickadees. So what I did was this. I took my line drawing, which was in my page protector already, and I thought, well, I'll see what happens if I put a little paint on it. And I'm just putting an ugly color on there now, just so you can see it. But I started painting. And you know what? It paints pretty much like when you're on a plate. And then if you don't like what you're doing, you can just erase it and start over and your line drawing is already there for you. So I'm thinking that for people who are working on a special project and you really want to get some practice with it and make sure it's going to turn out well before you actually work on your plate, this might be a way to do it. And it's a very simple way to do it. And this is what we're going to be working on today. This is the chickadees. Um, the first thing about the chickadees that you should know is you're going to need some brushes. Most of them are very small, so I'm just going to show them to you ahead of time. Um, I'm using a quarter inch square shader. I'm using my liner, the real long one. I'm also using a number one, which is not a liner, but it's a little bit thicker than a liner, and it works pretty well for some of these things that we need to do. And then I have two rounded quill brushes. Um, this one is a it doesn't say what size it is, but I would think it's about, a, I don't know, three or four. This one is probably a one, a, a two. And they're, they're both very good for bird's feathers. So if you've never done bird's feathers before and you want to make sure you get that nice rounded little edge on them, this is a good brush for that. Okay. Um, last week we used turpentine. This week we're going back to mineral spirits. So we're going to start with our little chests. And I'm going to be using my square shader, uh, the quarter inch. And I'm going to use mixing yellow. And you um, might be surprised to think mixing yellow, but it helps when you get done with uh, painting the birds. It kind of rounds them out a little better. So right here, we're going to turn the plate upside down. And I'm going to put a little mixing yellow right under their wing. And I'm going to do it on all three birds. It's just a little easier because when you get the hang of something, um, if you do it on all three, then you're, you're consistent in the way that you do it. I'm going to turn it here so I can get underneath this wing here. And I'm only doing the little top half of this bird here. So there, you can see where I put the yellow. You you take it and you draw it right under there, a little bit darker, closer to the wing, uh, fading it out as you go. And that's why you side load your brush with mixing yellow. It'll do that for you automatically. Okay, now we're going to be using um, silver gray, side loading again on our number four brush. And this time we're going to come down and do the front part of the breast of this little bird and down here on the little bird down here. So we're going to start, and this time we're going to kind of do a stroke that, I'll get up close so you can see what I'm doing. And the silver gray is kind of light and kind of hard to see, but I don't know if you saw that up there. But I put it along the front of the bird there, and then just along the bottom. And I'm just doing it down and then kind of feathering it over lightly. Doing the same thing on this bird here. I'm making it a little bit darker so you can see it. Okay, I hope you can see that. All right, and then on this bird, the little bird down at the bottom, and I'm side loading with the silver gray again, I'm going to start and flip him over and start on this side first of him. Bring the depth up from down below and then just let it fade into that yellow. You can see how I did that there. 
Okay, so those are their, their little breasts on this fire. That's all we're going to do. We're not going to do too much else. And you notice up here, I did touch the um, pine needles, but remember we did the pine needles last week and we did them with turpentine only. And the nice part about that is the turpentine keeps them from smearing and smudging when we're painting over them. Okay, we're going to clean that brush off. And I'm going to use, it's a, it's a smaller brush, I'm going to use this brush, which is my smallest of the rounded quill brushes that I have. I'm going to move my turpentine stuff closer so we can get to it. There we go. That's a little easier. I don't have to keep moving everything. And um, this time we're going to start working on the hood of the bird, which is this part up here by the eye and the throat of the bird, which is this part here. And there's one down here, but for some reason I left it off. So let me just real quickly draw that in so that we have it here. Okay, I'm gonna put it in for the little bird so that he has it. Yeah, just so we have something to work from. Close up my, my. I used a, um, a Sharpie just a Sharpie to do that. Uh, it has to be a permanent marker and a nice fine point is always good. So I'm going to start with black blue. A black blue is kind of a pretty color and I'm going to do his the hood in that. I'm just doing the top of the hood in that color because that's going to be our highlight. So you see, I just brushed it over the top of the hood. All righty. Clean my brush. Get a little oil on it. Now I'm going into the black. I'm kind of making a circular motion when I load my black. And I'm just going to start at the base back here and pull it back from the eye back to there. And then I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to pull it forward. Remember, it's always easier to paint towards yourself. And I'm going to leave a little bit of that blue there as kind of a highlight. Make this a little bit darker so you can see it. Okay. And we're going to go over to this bird and do the same thing. Well, it's nice to have three birds in a row. You can pretty much do everything exactly the, the way, same way. And I'm not right on the flat part of my brush. I'm kind of on the side of it. So it gives me a little bit of a point. And I'm going to turn this way and I'm going to do the same thing here. These rounded quills are really nice to use for this kind of thing. And I think you'll really enjoy them if you have a chance to get one. So, oops, let me move over a little more there. Can you see that? There. I don't want to get the reflections in there too much for you. Okay, and then this bird, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come down here and we're going to pull down towards the back of the hood. I'm going to go over a little over the eye. You can see more of this bird than you can of the others. And then I'm going to turn this way and do the same thing. Now on the next fire, we will get the hood in much darker, but the black can chip off if you're not careful. So you want to make sure that you don't Load it on too heavy at one time because it will chip off. And I'm just, okay, there's that little bird. Okay, now I'm going to go and I'm going to do that little, I don't know what you call it, the throat of the bird, I guess. And we're going to do the same color, the black, and we're just going to paint in. Always turn the plate so that you're painting towards yourself. And 
There we go. So I paint along the lines first there, and then I'm just going to fill it in. I'm running out of oil. Hang on a minute. Get a little oil here. Oh, here we are. We're up here. I don't want to paint towards myself. Okay. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, he's really, he's really not, the faces are not that difficult on these. So now we've got the little throat. We've got the little hood done. We're going to go back and do the eye. Um, you know you're going to play with this, just like I'm playing with it. You're going to do that. Everybody does it. Just be careful that you don't overwork it. All righty. I'm going to take my liner now. And we're going to um, take the liner. And we're going to put it in our brown. I have a rich brown. And you're using brown on the eyes for this time. Then next time, you'll use a little bit of black to accent them. Always try to leave. Think of where, which direction they're looking. With these little birds, they're kind of they're kind of looking right at us. So you're going to want to make sure that you leave the little the little um, highlight in the middle of their eye, so that they look like they're looking right at you. Oops, that was a little oily. Okay, I used another brush to just lift it out, and I'll go back in now that I'm not quite so oily. Go up here and do this guy. So I painted the top part of that little eye. I don't know if you can see. And now I'm going to do the bottom part. But I want him to look at me. So I don't want to paint the whole thing in. And I don't know if you can tell, but there is a little dot there in the middle. And then over here, I'm going to do the same thing. This is with the uh, brown. And don't worry, if you accidentally paint it all in, you've got a pico pay. And you can take the pico pay and just lift it out. In fact, I'm going to have to do that on this little guy because he's he was just, the paint was a little too oily. So let me do that. Can you see on my little bottom guy there? He doesn't have an eye at all. We're going to take the pico pay. We're going to go in. Hmm. Okay. Try to lift the eye out. There I'm doing it. Might have to let this set up a little. It might be a little too, for some reason, my brown got kind of oily. Another way you can address that issue, if that comes on, is you can also take a little bit of white, put it on your brush, and just put a little, yeah, right there, see? And maybe put a little one here. And that'll also help give you a little bit of an eye. So play with it. Decide what works for you. I, my problem is that the the um, the brown was a little too oily. Okay, now we're going to take a little bit of blue black, and I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you probably can. Right up in here by the by the bird's eye, on both these birds, I have some little dots, and I'm just going to go over those lightly. Kind of choppy, kind of just like they are, with a little blue-black, or black-blue, whatever you want to call it. I've heard people call it either thing on the, on the paint, it's black-blue. So, okay. So we've done the eyes, we've done the hood and the throat, the beak. The beak is going to be done with black. 
and you're going to you're going to want to make it see how fine it is when I drew it in you're going to want to keep it like that so you're going to go this way this, this way this way just keep it very very fine the lower half of the beak if you can do it is usually a darker color than the top half of the beak the top half of the beak is usually like a white and then the lower half of the beak usually has the black. Now, don't try to do too much on this one. You can, you can paint it in a little darker on the next one. So there you can see the little beaks. And then I'm gonna do this little guy down here. Now his beak is divided already in half. So I'm gonna try very hard to See how I did the lower half in the dark? And then I'm just gonna put one line over the top half and his beak is done. So their beaks are done now. Now we're going into the body. The body's actually the easiest part. You're gonna take and do the back of the bird with like a silver gray. And um, that color works pretty well. And what I like to do when I do the silver gray is I like to go back to my quarter inch brush because I just have better luck with that, putting it on and side load it. And um, in this case, we're going to, here we're gonna, we're gonna leave a little bit of a highlight on this bird right there. We're gonna leave a little bit of a highlight right on the tops of their backs. So, I'm turning this little bird upside down so that I can leave that highlight as I paint. Can you see how I did that? Yes, I think you can. And on this little bird, and if you paint it in and you need to wipe it out, you can wipe it out a little, that's fine. That little bird, and then let's go down to the gray one down here at the bottom. I'm turning the plate over because I want to put the, and I'm, I'm actually going to add a little black because I want to make it a little bit darker over on this side. And I'm just touching it. I'm not, I'm not over painting it. You know, I'm not trying to get it real smooth or anything. These are birds. Birds have feathers. Their feathers are not that um, smooth. I mean, they are, but they aren't. <laughs> so it, you, you need a little texture when you're painting. So a few little choppy strokes like that don't hurt because that gives you a little extra, oh, I don't know what you want to call it, but a little bit of extra texture, I guess. And then we're going to put some texture over on this side and just bring it down. Okay, so we have his back done. Now the fun part, we're gonna do the feathers. It's gonna surprise you, I think. Um, I First of all, I put in these little lines because I, I figured that this line, this line, and this line will help me know where to start and stop feathers. So I had a picture of um, chickadees that I'm working from. This is the picture. And I took and I put little lines wherever their feathers started so that I was it was much easier for me to um, remember where they started and stopped. Okay. So now I'm going to take my blue black or you can use Cope on Copenhagen on this um, this time and you can wait on the blue black until next time. It's really up to you. But I'm just going to pull down and pull down. And this brush does the work for you. Watch this. This is so cool. The brush does the work for you. You really don't have to worry about these feathers. You're just pulling down, just kind of down on an, 
I know I'm, I'm backhanding it, but that's the way that I find it's easiest to paint those. And I'm going to do the same thing on these down here. I'm going to take my take my brush and just and I'm leaving them separate a little bit because I have to put some black in there. Okay. And then we're down onto this bird. And this bird, so those are the two up there. And you know, my studies are available on my website. I'm making V's on the bird's back. With Copenhagen. Because I'm going to take and I'm going to put some black in here with the liner. You'll see how that works. So I'm just trying to set it up with the V's. Um, and then down here on his tail, this outer band is actually going to be the blue. And then there's a tail down here on this bird, and it's kind of behind the... So I'm just letting him sort of fade off, okay. All right, so that's how I've done my birds so far. Now remember, this is the first fire. You can go back. You don't have to get everything exactly the way, you know, all the, all the definition in there. If you don't and you want to just fire because you're afraid you'll mess things up, that's fine. But generally speaking, you try to get as much detail as you can on this one and then just tweak it on the next one. And now we're going to do this little tail here. And again, if you don't have a rounded brush, a little rounded quill, it's probably worthwhile to get one. Um, sometimes you have um, a, going to a teacher or something and they can lend you theirs just so you can see what it's like. Um, okay, now... With this little tail, what I did was I went around the outline of the tail that I already had there. I went down this way, um, and then I went through the middle of it to give him his little, his little color. Okay. Now, the liner. This is the part that you always dread the most. Um, this is my liner. I love this liner. This is a really, really, really good liner. And um, you can stumble upon them pretty easily. Um, you know, a liner, it doesn't have to be a china brush. As long as it, it bends and, and moves easily at the end, um, you can get these at any art store and they come out just fine. So, okay, I'm wiggling my liner in my... Um, my black, my best black. Best black, I think, is about the best color to use. And I'm just going to put my little feet in here. I don't even know if you can see the little feet. And then I'm going to start to put some of the color up in the bird. I don't know if the liner is really the best. I might go to back to this rounded brush that I have because I, I kind of like the way it, it takes. You can put two colors on it. You can put the black and you can put the, um, the blue. Let me get a little more black on the end there. Come on. There we go. You gotta get the black on there. It takes a little while to get the black to flow the way you want it to. What you want it to do is just highlight the wings. Come on. 
I'll try one other brush. I think this brush might actually be better. There we go. Okay, I've decided the one actually works better there. It, it just depends. Sometimes your paint works really well. Sometimes it doesn't. It depends how long your paint has been sitting up before you get back to it. Okay, so there are the little feathers on that little guy. I'm just outlining what I've already done in the blue. Copenhagen blue. I'm just taking, so this little guy, this is the one I'm going to do right now. You see how he's done in Copenhagen blue? I'm just going to outline one side of those, those feathers coming straight down. a little here we go coming straight down try not the, the black you try not to get too much black on the feathers at this point but you do want a little bit of black there you might even want a little bit of black up in here and then we're going to do a little bit of black down in here too I find faster I work, the better I work usually. And over here, it's a little too well defined. There we go. So now I got my little feathers going. And again, you're gonna play with this stuff a little bit. Just don't overplay with it. Just pull it down. Remember, you've got another fire. You can go in and really make these crisp if you want on the last fire. And now we're doing this little guy. This guy is the hardest, and he has to be done with the liner, unfortunately, because he has very distinct lines on his back. Oops, sorry. Find if I paint towards myself, I have better luck. Can you see? I, I, I'm trying real hard to paint, but not get it out of uh, frame here for you. And then turn him and do the outside of this. You know, one of the problems is when you put your, um, when you put your pen on there, it's hard to remember, did I go over that spot or not? So yes, you need to go over those spots. Okay, that's that little guy there. And once he's fired, you'll be able to see where you missed or where you can put more feathers in. Don't be afraid if you need to blend things just to use your finger to just tap. Sometimes that will also blend things for you. And on the tail, right now I'm just going to outline the tail. I'm gonna wait till it's fired to make sure I've added all the lines I need down there. Hang on, I'm gonna to have to study this a little more because I'm having there. Yeah, that's a little better. And I think I'm gonna to have to put little legs down here, at least one. Just something because you can't just stand in the middle of nowhere. It looks kind of dumb. So I might have to touch it up a little bit using my Pico Pay. I love these Pico Pays. 
you notice I just stopped for a minute, took my pointer, and went and kind of dressed up some of these areas where I was a little bit concerned. And then even with the pico pay, if you're worried about the lines here, maybe they mix, mix too much, you can just take the pico pay and pull them out a little bit just to give you some separation. Okay. So that's about all we're going to do with the birds. We're going to fire this now. And then we'll come back and do a second coat, which will be putting the little tickies on the pine branches and really dressing up our birds. And then um, we'll talk about the background. I'll show you some of the technique, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because I think that's something that when it comes to putting background on this, you can, this plate, I think I'm, I'd like to leave the background white and I just like to paint the outside. But on this one, I did the blue and I did the back. And I'll show you how I did this because it's a real nice, easy blending. Well, I thank you all for watching. And uh, finish, fire these birds now. And then next time we will come back and uh, do the second fire on the birds. Alrighty, thanks. Hi, I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope that you will watch future programs by liking and subscribing to my page. If you do subscribe, I would really appreciate it so that other people who have a similar interest will be able to see more of this kind of programming. I have studies available at my website along with products. If you're interested in finding out more about those, please look at the description box below. Thank you.